Hey, this is Kip, and this is a tutorial on how to fly this Cessna 172 Skyhawk, the regular edition, not the G1000 edition, in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And I'm running version 1930, which is out after the Japan update. So things may uh, change if you're coming from the future watching this. So to start, uh, the most important thing to do is remember the keyboard shortcut Control 2. In this aircraft, that zooms the instrument view, instrument view 2, which is straight to where the GPS and the autopilot panels are. So I'm going to go ahead and enable autopilot by clicking the AP button here on the left side of the autopilot unit. Now, this plane has the Garmin uh, GPS units, are the Garmin 530 up here on the top and the 430 right below it. And in this configuration, these actually don't interact with the autopilot except if you're using navigation mode, in which case the GPS and the autopilot work together. And I'll go over that briefly, but I mainly want to focus on the other simple modes that the autopilot provides. So I've turned on the autopilot, and what we can see is that right now I'm just flying straight and level. What it does when you first activate it is enable two different modes. There's your lateral or horizontal or heading mode and that appears on the left side of the autopilot display and then you have your vertical mode which is on the right and the majority of the display. So when you first enable the autopilot you'll see it say ROL and that stands for roll hold mode or just roll. So that will in this version of the flight sim all that does is level out your wings. They may update it later. There are some autopilots um, like the G1000 and the manual for that, they actually are supposed to maintain your current roll or bank. Um, but today in this version of Flight Sim, roll mode just levels your wings out. And then we have VS here is the default, which stands for vertical speed mode. And our vertical speed rate is actually, if I click this alt button twice, we'll see real quick that it's zero feet per minute. So that basically just means it's holding our altitude at 3,900 feet, which is, happens to be my current altitude. So let's start with heading mode. That's one of the lateral modes. Instead of roll mode, which just holds us level, heading mode will turn our heading to a, specif uh, to a specified heading. So how do we change the specified heading? We use this little heading dial here. And you'll notice when I turn this, and I'm doing this by just pointing at either the left or the right side of the dial to get the little curved arrow to show up as my cursor. And then I'm using my mouse wheel up or down, and that'll turn it in increments of 10 degrees. So you can see it snapping mostly to those 10 degree marks. Now, if you want to fine tune this, it's a little bit weird. If you want to go in smaller increments, you actually have to click and hold. It's a little weird. As soon as you click, it'll jump 10 degrees or so, and then it will slowly move like one or two degrees at a time. So if you want to really accurately get it, say, on an eastbound heading, so 90 degrees, I'll click and hold and wait for it to get there and then let go. So right now, that seems to be the way that you have to do it to get a very precise uh, heading dialed in. So I changed our heading to our heading bug here to east. So that's our intended direction, but you'll notice nothing's happening yet. And that's because, and I'll hit control two again. By the way, control one brings you to mostly see the hardware, like the main um, six pack indicators here, not the electronics, but Control 2 brings you to look at the GPS area. So Control 1 and Control 2 are very helpful. So now that I've dialed in our heading selection to 90 degrees directly east, I need to tell the autopilot how to get there. And since it's in roll mode, it's not going to go there. I need to change it to heading mode. So you go ahead and just click HDG. And I'll zoom out. And you can see that it's banking us to the right. It's doing like a standard like 25 to 30 degree turn and now it's leveling us off. You can see that east, our heading bug, is directly in front of us. It's got us right on target. So because heading mode is already activated down here, 
any changes to the heading bug will take effect immediately. So I can just start rolling this to the right using my mouse wheel. And I'm moving it all the way down to around a south heading. So it's around 185 degrees or so. And you can see it's turning us to that. Simple enough, right? So that's how you do heading mode. I'm going to skip over the GPS mode right now, which is under nav mode. Um, I'm actually going to make another video that's specifically about doing flight planning and using the nav mode. But if you want to use it right now, you can go ahead and click nav mode. And if you have a flight plan loaded in, say from the world map, you chose a few waypoints in your flight plan, then it'll follow that. If you want to see that on the map here, on either one of these, the Garmin 530 or the 430, you can hover over this right knob here. There's two areas. There's the smaller ring and the bigger ring. You want the one in the middle. You rotate that to the right one time, and that'll give you a map display. And then you can use the range buttons to make your range larger, and that'll zoom out and show you any flight plan that you might have. So this is also in GPS mode here. It can be in either GPS or VOR mode or VLOC mode. You can change that by hitting the CDI button. So in VLOC mode, that's going to be actually following your VOR frequencies if you're using radio navigation. So make sure that it's in the right mode, that it's on the GPS. And then when you click nav mode down here, that will be using GPS mode to do the flying for you. So now it's turning to the left because it's trying to get me onto this route here in white, this path. So it's going to do a 45 degree intercept with that path and then follow it. Okay, so now let's talk about the vertical modes. So the easiest to, uh, to understand vertical mode is altitude holds mode. So if I click on ALT, it just says altitude and 3900. When you click this, it'll hold at your current altitude, rounded to the nearest 100 feet. So 3,900 feet, and it'll just stay there. Now, this right knob here is the altitude selection dial. And this also has two, um, it should have two rings on it. The outer one is 1,000 feet at a time, and the inner ring is 100 feet at a time. So you can use that to dial in a desired altitude. So say we want to climb up to 4,500 feet. We're actually at 30, oh, actually we're almost at, we're at uh, what, 3,900 feet right now. So say we want to go up to 4,500 feet. You'll notice that nothing is happening. This is our vertical speed indicator and we're flat at zero. So it's still holding our altitude. And the reason for that is we haven't, just like with our heading, we haven't yet told it how to change altitude. So. Now that we've told it we want to go to 4,500 feet, we have to tell it how to get there. And so with this autopilot, vertical speed mode is the only option we have for doing a change in altitude. So to get to vertical speed mode, you actually click the Alt or Alt button again, and that'll go to vertical speed mode. You see it says zero, and then it goes away. Now that zero means zero feet per minute. So we're in vertical speed mode, but we're not changing to a positive or negative feet per minute value. We're just at zero, so it's just holding our altitude, so it's essentially the same as using altitude hold mode. Now we use these up and down buttons to choose our vertical speed, so our feet per minute up or down. In our case, because we want to climb, we're going to start clicking up, and we're going to hit up as much as we want until we get to um, our desired rate of climb. So I chose 500, so that's 500 feet per minute, and you can see now that our altitude is increasing and our vertical speed indicator is showing around 500 feet per minute. So it'll average 500 feet per minute. And when we selected 4,500 feet, we're actually using basically an altitude selection mode, and what it'll do is level off at our selected altitude once it gets there. Something to keep in mind is that autopilot does not maintain your throttle or change your throttle settings at all. So if your throttle isn't fast enough to climb at the rate you've told it to, you're going to need to increase your throttle or decrease the rate at which you're climbing to something that your aircraft can handle. So in a moment you'll see you will level off at 4,500 feet 
And when we do, it'll change from vertical speed mode back into altitude hold mode. So it really um, gently levels off. So you can see how it's slowing more and more. We're down to about 200 feet per minute. So it gives us a nice um, comfortable easing into our altitude that we selected. Okay, so now that we're around 4,500 feet, it's gonna slowly get us exactly there. What I'm gonna do is do a descent. So to do that, all we have to do is do the same thing we did before, except choose an altitude lower than our current altitude. So let's go down to 3,500 feet. Again, once I change it using the altitude selection dial, nothing happens. Because it completed the vertical speed mode, it completed the altitude change already and switched to altitude hold mode, we need to change it back to vertical speed mode again. So what I do is just hit ALT again. It says vertical speed mode is zero. I'm gonna start hitting down. Let's go 1,000 feet per minute this time. Heck, let's do 1,500. Just like a steep dive. So it's pointing our nose down, and we're going down at 1,500 feet per minute, down to 3,500 feet. You can see that my speed is in the yellow now. So like I mentioned before, you have to maintain your throttle. So I'm going to go ahead and pull back on my throttle, just like you would if you were making kind of a steep dive because you want to keep that in the green so you don't stress the aircraft. And we'll just continue to go down to 3,500. So we're almost there. You'll see that these two balance each other out. The vertical speed starts leveling off to give us a smooth leveling. And you can see my airspeed is going down. So I'm going to start compensating for that by pushing my throttle back up. So when we finally level off, I'll be back towards a good cruising uh, throttle setting. And you may have also noticed that um, during that, there were turns that were happening because we're in navigation mode. And you can see here that it's actually got us right on the path that I selected in our flight planning before I loaded into the aircraft. So that'll actually just follow point to point to point. Each point that it gets to, it'll automatically change to the next point. If you want to see your flight path, you can go ahead and click on this um, FPL button down here in the bottom center. And this will show our flight, our flight plan. And the same thing with the uh, 430 down here. Hit FPL and see the flight plan. And if you want to scroll, you have to click in the center of this button on the right. That'll bring up a cursor, a highlighted area, and then use the outer ring to scroll through your flight plan. But this isn't a tutorial on the 530 or the 430, but that's where it is just in case you're curious. I'll have other videos explaining this in more detail on how to use it.